Welcome to the Butterfly Effect brought to you by Moss Adams. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage 15 of the Tour de France 2021. 191 kilometers, just under 120 miles in length and four categorized climbs. The last three are really tight to each other. So you hit the third to go and the second are almost one climb in, in and on themselves. The last climb exceptionally steep finishing in Andorra. Andorra is quickly becoming one of the most famous countries. It's a tiny little country all on its own and it hosts bike races all the time. When I won my Vuelta in 2013, we had one spectacular stage in Andorra where it rained all day long and just absolutely beautiful and guys just blew up all over the place. So I have fond memories of racing in Andorra. When the stage starts today, I said there was four climbs, but really there's a solid five, but they don't categorize the first one. And it's a monster one. It's about 15 kilometers and it's going straight out of town. Right from the word go, it's Michael Woods throwing in the tack and we just start seeing the field strung out and blown up and people opening up gaps all over the place. Michael Woods move will get brought back. Multiple attacks will go again about 15 kilometers into the stage. A group of eight with Steven Kreiswick, Yumbo Visma is in the move. Behind that move, shortly after that, a group of 24 will form with two more Yumbo Visma riders. We're talking Sepp Kuss, the American, and Walt Van Aert. And we know Walt Van Aert's on form, so anything's possible. Now, right away, alarm bells are going off in my head because they're breaking the number one rule, and I'm gonna call them a knucklehead. They have three guys that can support their race leader, Jonas Vindigo, and he's isolated back there. He does have one Mike Tunison, and luckily for Yumbo Visma, the field will slow down and back with UAE Team Emirates allowing 32 riders to go off the front. In that group is massive numbers. I already told you Yumbo Visma have three, Trek Segafredo have three, multiple other teams have two with the Kunit Quick Step back there, having both Julian Alaphilippe and Ballerini. It's a fantastic breakaway group, which will establish itself early in this stage 15 of the Tour de France. Now behind, I wanna clarify why I think Yumbo Visma is a knucklehead move. Jonas Vindigo, he's there with just Mike Tunison. Mike Tunison is basically a sprinter. If the racing stays fast and hard, there's no way he can do anything for Jonas. Jonas will be on his own multiple times when the stage starts to get really hard later. If he was to flat, crash, need water, food, with only Mike Tunis in there, as soon as the racing gets hard, he can blow and then drop off really fast. Up front, the group of 32, they start playing some games about at 155 kilometers to go and they'll split in half. You have Wout Van Aert in the front group from Yumbo Visma, but behind, Francis De Jure had three riders in the group of 32 and all three missed the, the split in the break. So Francis De Jure will get on the front and pull that break back. After they pull the break back, they decide they're going to ride the front for the next part of the stage until we get into the mountains proper because they have Davide Godou. Now, when you have a rider like Godou, he's a fabulous climber, but he's a small guy. Francis De Jure, this is a good tactic for them. The other two riders, they can't climb. Davide Gadu is the only one they have left, really that can get over these mountains at the finish of the stage. And so they're gonna ride one and two guys on the front for the rest of the stage to try to control the break until we get into the later climbs of this stage. Now, the first categorized climb, Wout Van Aert, Wout Poles, and Michael Woods are all battling for points. Wout Pools will take the win on the first KOM, Wout Van Aert will take second, and Woods will take third, so we got the three Ws. KOM second on the stage, they'll flip-flop between the two Wouts, with Wout Van Aert easily taking that KOM, Wout Pools second, and Woods third. Now let's jump back to the GC guys with about just under 60 kilometers to go. Enos are firing on all cylinders. They have two guys in the break of 32, Dylan Van Barley and Jonathan Castro Viejo. And in the back with the second KOM coming up, they're jumping on the front and they're gonna blow this field up. They start with Richie Port, he's riding fantastic. But what really surprised me the most, Garrett Thomas has found his legs again and started to recover from his stage three crash earlier in the Tour de France. 
Now he's riding good. Richie Port, G. Thomas on the front are just blowing up the field and bringing it down to just the real top 10 GC favorites and a bunch of their teammates. But the whole field is disintegrated and you're left with 30 guys. Up front in the break of 32, Enos will pull their two riders, Dylan Van Barley and Jonathan Castor Viejo, out when the tax started. Those two will drop back to help Carapaz keep the pace hard over the third KOM and all the way into the last KOM of today's stage. Bombing down the descent, Dylan Van Barley on the front. He is just driving it. Guillaume Martin, who's second on GC, can't hold the wheel of the GC favorites up there with Enos driving it hard and he'll lose the gap when they're going through the corners. He'll spend the rest of the time chasing all the way into the last KOM of the stage. He has a little bit of help from Cataneo back there, the Dakunic quick step rider who started the day 10th on general classification and he'll pull one of the Kofidis riders that got dropped in the break of 32 and he'll have a little bit of help to try to do some damage control. Remember, he's sitting second on general classification and so even if he's getting dropped off of the group of GC favorites, he's still got to ride all the way hard into today's finish so that he can keep himself in the top 10 on general classification. While Van Art will control the breakaway to start the last climb all together for Sepp Kuss. It's a super hard climb, six and a half kilometers long at over 8% average. Super difficult. While Van Art was aggressive throughout the stage, stealing KOM points, keep covering any attacks that went up the road, while Sepp Kuss was super calm back there. This was absolutely beautiful tactics with Sepp Kuss. Jumbo Visma, in terms of trying to win the stage, I thought it's fantastic if you put three guys in the break. Now I'll call them knuckleheads because I don't like leaving a possible podium here at the Tour de France with Jonas Vinigo behind isolated when you're trying to win a stage. But if you take it and you want to look at it and simplify it, winning a stage when you have three guys, Steven Kreiswick, Sepp Kuss, and Walt Van Aert up there, it's a beautiful tactic. When they hit the last mountain, Nairo Quintana starts lighting things up. He was aggressive on the penultimate KOM. Now he's going hard again, but he'll blow up and drop. And then Sepp Kuss, the American Flying Eagle, is on the attack. He's got Alejandro Valverde, the oldest man in this year's Tour de France, latched onto his wheel. And Alejandro Valverde is holding on for dear life. When Sepp finally accelerates again, he'll drop Alejandro Valverde. We'll see Alejandro Valverde look over his shoulder, but there's no help coming. Now Alejandro Valverde has to dig deep to keep Sepp Kuss in check when they go over the last KOM. It's a crazy technical descent. Sepp Kuss will go over the last KOM with about 15 kilometers to the finish line and have to hold off Alejandro Valverde. He's got a 25, 30 second lead and Sepp Kuss is just carving up the descent. He is flying down and losing no time to Alejandro Valverde, who we all know is fantastic when it comes to carving descents up. They come out of the final turn of the mountain through the tunnel and Sepp Kuss will win solo in spectacular style stage 15 of this year's Tour de France. Alejandro Valverde will finish 23 seconds behind him, never able to gain any time on the American Flying Eagle. A group behind Wout Pulls will win the sprint behind for a podium place and take the KOM jersey to go along with it. Now let's go back to the last climb at the beginning and we'll talk about the GC favorites because it was spectacular. Enos were on form, they were fire firing all over the place and drilling it. Carapaz launches the first real attack. After that, attacks are coming from all of the general classification favorites. Rigoberto ran through an attack. Jonas Vinigo threw in multiple attacks. And finally, near the top of the KOM, Tade Pogacar just says, I've had enough of all this. He jumps on the front, sets a steady tempo for the last 1K, controlling all of the favorites at this year's Tour de France and leading over the climb. While Van Aert, who was in the breakaway of 32, will drop back, wait for his race leader, Jonas Vinigo, and he'll pull those guys all the way to the finish, about five minutes behind Sepp Kuss's win on stage 15. Jumbo Visma, get the win, is a fantastic win. Congratulations, Sepp Kuss, the flying American. I love watching you win. Heartbroken to see the tactics being played out of the knucklehead effect on the stage, but man, you won in spectacular style. Always warms my heart 
when I see just amazing, loyal, fantastic domestique like Sepp Kuss, who worked so hard throughout his career already, especially last year during the Tour de France and of course the Tour of Spain, working nonstop for Primoz Roglic. Here he gets the Freedom card and he puts it to good use and wins a spectacular stage in his European hometown, by the way. So Sepp Kuss, congratulations. Loved watching the stage. Jumbo Visma, you have a great stage 15 win to go along with Wout Van Aert's stage 11 earlier at this year's Tour de France. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.